up y'all welcome back to my channel my name is zoe and today i am bringing you 10 spooky book recommendations that you should read this fall So this is part two of just a little tiny mini series that I wanted to do for book recommendations this fall. The first video I did was 10 books that are not scary that you should read this fall. And then this one, part two, is spooky books. So I will link the first one down below if you're not into scary books but still want to read some fall atmospheric reads, I definitely recommend checking out that video. So this one I'm really excited for because I personally love scary books. I probably don't read enough. I'm still definitely tiptoeing into the horror genre. These are going to be kind of a mix between really scary and maybe not so scary or maybe you don't think they're scary at all. It is very subjective but in my opinion these have some pretty thrilling action-packed elements. I do have some that are more horror, some that are kind of paranormal, some that are more mystery thriller, a little bit of everything for everybody. Hopefully maybe I can inspire you to pick up at least one of these books. Let's go ahead and dive in. The first recommendation I have is easily one of the most intense and graphic books I have ever read. So definitely trigger warning for all kinds of violence for that. That book is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Like I said, this book is super intense, not for the faint of heart. It probably maxes out my scale of like violence in books. The synopsis follows two estranged sisters. They haven't spoken in years. When they were younger, their little sister actually ended up being kidnapped and murdered and it really tore their family apart. So one of the sisters is very wealthy. She has a very seemingly glamorous life and the other sister is not as glamorous. She's more middle class and like I said they haven't spoken in years. So we jump into the story where the really wealthy well-to-do sister, her husband actually ends up dying and it kind of sparks this mystery and ends up reuniting the two sisters to try and figure out really what happened to their little sister. I realize that that synopsis is not super gripping, but if you want something that is very action-packed, very action-driven, that will make your heart pound, you'll want to pick up this one. The next recommendation that I have is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. And I know, I know, not a lot of people like this book. <laughs> I can definitely understand why not a whole lot of people enjoy this one. But I have to say, I read this a couple months ago and I thought it was a blast. It's a very cliche kind of horror story. It reminds me a lot of the original Scream movies where it's just kind of like these really cliche, cheesy high schoolers following them around and like someone keeps murdering a bunch of them <laughs> in their high school. It's not like the most thought-provoking crazy twisted plot. In the middle of it you pretty much find out who the killer is so there's not a lot of mystery but I will say that the murders and the teenage drama is just kind of fun and I think sometimes it's sort of entertaining to read something like that. The murders are a little gruesome. They are descriptive so warning for that. If you're watching this recommendation video you know that some of these books are going to be a little spooky and intense so that's what you get with this book. It is young adult, so like I said, not written well, not a whole lot of mystery, but it is a fun kind of slasher, entertaining read, so go into it with an open mind if you do read it. The next book that I am recommending I absolutely loved, and that is Baby Teeth by Zoe Stage. I know I've talked about this one recently, but I just can't get over it. I absolutely love this, read it earlier, and was totally surprised. I haven't heard of anyone else talking about this book, so I think I'm just talking about it to make up for the fact that no one else is. <laughs> but basically this follows the story of a husband and a wife. Their daughter is seven years old and she refuses to speak. The dad is a working dad and the mom is a stay-at-home mom and they really try to do everything they can to get their daughter Hannah to speak so their mother takes her to doctor's appointments, try to figure out what's wrong, and they just conclude that she 
can speak, she just refuses to speak. What I really liked about this book is that it's told from the mother's perspective and the daughter's perspective. So even though the daughter isn't speaking, we read from her perspective so we get a peek into what's going on in her mind. In doing so, we find out that she actually really hates her mother and ha kind of has this like loving obsession with her father. So she creates these scenarios where she completely like manipulates her father into making him believe that their mother is like crazy and against the daughter and oh, she messes with the mom so much. I don't know why, but for some reason, I think that storylines where like kids are kind of diabolical and crazy are just really <laughs> intriguing and really scary. So this one was a lot of fun also to read. I can't recommend this one enough. Like I said, I don't hear people talking about it. The things that Hannah does to her mom and then the dad, you're just like, oh, why aren't you seeing what your daughter is doing? Like you're so dumb. I was slightly disappointed by the ending, but I still enjoyed the book overall and totally recommend it for a fun Halloween read. The next book I'm recommending most of you have probably heard of, That Is You by Carolyn Kempness. I promise I won't spend a lot of time on this because I know, like I said, most of you have heard of this. We follow the story of Joe, who is this guy who lives in New York. He sells books at a bookstore and he is basically psychotic. He gets obsessed with this one girl who walks in one day and ends up stalking her and manipulating her to basically become his girlfriend. And yeah, Joe has a lot of secrets. Joe is not right in the head and we follow it from his perspective, which is kind of cool. His inner dialogue is always talking to his girlfriend as if he's talking right to her. So he'll say, you know, you do this and you do that, but it's more of like an inner dialogue. It's very interesting. The prose was great. I thought the storyline was great. I'm sure most of you have read this or if not, then you watch the Netflix series, which I thought was phenomenally done. This one is great. If you haven't picked it up yet, I hope I convince you to because it's just so, interesting reading from the perspective of someone who is a stalker and someone who's not right in the head and the way that he justifies what he's doing is super interesting. I really like this one and think it's perfect for this time of year. The next recommendation that I have is The Long Walk by Stephen King. This was the first Stephen King book that I ever read. I can't remember who recommended it to me but Someone mentioned at some point that this was a really good one to start with, and it absolutely was. I've only read two books by Stephen King. It was this one and Elevation, which he put out last year, and I really enjoyed this one. It was very twisty. I don't see a lot of people talking about this book, but I really recommend it if you have read Stephen King or haven't read Stephen King. This story is in a dystopian setting, so basically we're still in the United States, but the government is totally transformed in every single year, a hundred boys get picked to go on this long walk across the country. Basically, they have to walk until they no longer can. Like literally, they cannot stop for anything. There's no stopping for eating, going to the bathroom, sleeping, nothing. And if they stop walking, they die. So either they walk until they die or if they walk at a slower pace than I think it's like three miles an hour, they'll get shot and die. And whoever ends up winning the long walk gets whatever they want for the rest of their lives. So this story follows one of the boys who is on the long walk and you meet a ton of characters. You are just like transported into his mind. What goes on during this long walk every single mile. It is so intense. It's so intense. I literally felt exhausted reading this book. Like I felt like I was on the long walk. This was very mind bendy, very intense. Not much more to say about it. I totally recommend it. Again, even if you're not much into like dystopians, it's just such a fascinating thing to read from this character's perspective of being on the walk and seeing what happens. So Highly recommend this one. The next book that I have, I actually read every Halloween. It's kind of just become a tradition of mine. That is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I got this graphic novel edition 
three years ago and it's easily become just kind of one of my favorite books. The graphics are kind of scary. I'm sure most of you know what this is about, but this follows the story of Coraline who just moved to this new house with her parents. It's kind of old and creepy and her parents really kind of neglect her. They don't play with her. They don't try and entertain her. They're not even really that nice to her. They don't give her what she wants and they make her play outside and they're just kind of awful parents. One day it is raining outside and Coraline can't go outside and play. And so she is wandering around the house and she finds this kind of weird door that leads to actually nowhere. But then, I can't remember if it's in the middle of the night or the next day, the door gets opened and she walks through and she's in this alternate universe where she has the mom and the dad, but they are not neglectful. They're actually really, really nice. They give her all this nice stuff. They feed her this good food, but they're super creepy and they have buttons for eyes, which is just so weird. It doesn't sound scary, but somehow Neil Gaiman makes it scary and those creepy button-eyed parents basically try to kidnap Coraline, keep her in their alternate universe, and she needs to escape. So it's really great. I think it's supposed to be a middle grade. It's pretty scary for a middle grade. I recommend the graphic novel edition just because it's really it almost makes it a little bit more spooky seeing the mom. She really gets like crazy. This isn't like playful art. This is descriptive, realistic art. It's not like the movie. The movie did a good job of making it kind of kiddish, but this is like a pretty intense story. I can't wait to get to it this fall. The next recommendation that I have is Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. If you've been around on my channel for a while, you know that Gillian Flynn is one of my favorite authors. I have given every single one of her books five stars. This one was no exception. I actually listened to Dark Places on audiobook last year. It was either for the Spookathon or Contemporaryathon or some kind of readathon. I read this one and Sharp Objects within like the same week and I was so freaked out. This book is one of those rare books that actually freaked me out and I kind of like was afraid to go to bed at night because it was really intense. I hope I don't butcher what this is about, but it's about Libby Day. When she was like seven years old, survived when the rest of her family, her two sisters and her mother were murdered by her brother. So first of all, that whole thing is scary in and of itself, right? But the story takes place 25 years later where Libby's struggling to make money. She is asked to make an appearance at this thing called Kill Club, which is basically a bunch of people who are just really fascinated by like true crime things. So she goes, she makes an appearance, but then she's challenged by someone at the meeting that is trying to convince her that her brother did not actually murder her family. So this kind of sets her on a trajectory of trying to figure out what actually happened that night. Again, this one is fairly graphic, but oh my goodness, the way the story unfolds was done expertly. There's a really fascinating dual timeline that goes on that follows Libby as she's an adult trying to figure out what happened, but then also flashbacks to that day that the murders took place. They took place at night, and so all of the events leading up during that day into that night what really happened and it's so good and it's so creepy. We see it from the brother's perspective so we really know like what was going on with him and what actually happened and I just thought it was executed flawlessly. This one is so good but it is dark so warnings for that. Don't say I didn't warn you but this one was awesome. The next book that I have is My Best Friend's Exorcism. This is by Grady Hendrix. This is more of a paranormal read. It's pretty self-explanatory but it's actually set in the 80s which is really fun. The cover kind of gives that away from a very 80s like VHS tape vibe. It's telling the story of two best friends if I remember correctly like they end up kind of like tripping out on LSD and then one of the friends ends up stumbling upon something that basically ends up being a demon which takes her over and then her best friend needs to kind of save her. So she's doing everything that she can to save her friend from this demon and <laughs> it's pretty wild. Like it's a little satirical in my opinion. It was hard to take this totally serious just because I think the author was trying to make it a little bit more lighthearted with so many like 80s references and some tropey plots and stuff like that. But overall it didn't scare me by any means and because it was a little bit more lighthearted I enjoyed reading this one. I actually think it's real. it was written really well. I remember reading it on a plane ride. I thought it was entertaining and I liked the, the friendship trope 
trope and I actually there was like a good kind of message at the end of the book which was like kind of heartwarming and I enjoyed that. <laughs> so I recommend this one for around Halloween time for sure. The next recommendation I have I'm super excited to talk about because I loved this book and that was A House at the Bottom of a Lake. This is by Josh Mallerman who also wrote Bird Box and I haven't read Bird Box or anything else by Josh Mallerman yet but this one is so good. This is a short story so it's like... 117 pages so it's really short please pick it up if you haven't read it it follows the story of two teenagers I believe they're 17 years old and they just meet and they're going on their first date and for their first date they canoe out on this lake and they discover this house that is on the bottom of the lake <laughs> They end up diving down to explore the house and realize that it's in pristine condition. It's really weird. It has furniture and tableware and tchotchke things and they're all sitting in the house perfectly as if kind of by magic. It's very interesting but it's not really magical. It's actually kind of creepy. The way that Josh Mallerman writes this book makes it just seem very eerie and weird and you're like what is going on? Why is this happening? So the teenagers get really obsessed with this house. They end up buying like this scuba gear and going out to this house every single day. They end up getting into the house and exploring it. Weird things happen. I remember reading this book. I was actually reading it sitting over there in a chair with the window open and it was pouring rain outside and I just literally felt like I was in this story. It was so immersive. There were times where I felt a little like claustrophobic because they're underwater so if you're afraid of deep water or like drowning this one probably isn't for you. I just remember with the with the rain falling so hard and reading this it was like I almost felt like I was part of the book. Very atmospheric, weird things happened, kind of weird ending. I loved it. You can read it in one sitting. I really recommend this one. I don't feel like people have read this enough so please read this book. <laughs> okay I have one more book for you guys and that is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I just feel like I couldn't have gone through this spooky book recommendation without mentioning Riley Sager. I could have picked all three of his books, but this was his most recent and I do feel like this was the most scary. I wasn't scared, but it was definitely action-packed and made my heart beat a little fast at times. I'm sure that y'all have actually heard about this book. It is pretty new, but in this book we follow the story of Jules, who just got this gig to apartment sit at a very elite apartment called the Bartholomew in New York. When she gets the job, she ends up finding out that there's actually a lot of kind of interesting rules. She's not allowed to talk to anyone about the apartment. She's not allowed to have people over at the apartment. She's not allowed to stay a night away from the apartment. It's very interesting rules. She's only has to be there for three months, but she ends up finding out some things within the first like couple days that really start to kind of freak her out, get her concerned. Crazy things start happening in this apartment. There's very weird tenants that make you wonder what's really going on. I don't know. So a lot of mystery and intrigue in this one. I loved it. I think in all of Riley Sager's books he does dual timeline so this one was dual timeline as well. Sprinkled throughout a few chapters would be Jules in the future as she escaped the Bartholomew. So you're kind of like why did she escape? Why is she in the hospital? How did she get hurt? What happened? Like oh my gosh. When I was reading this book you could have convinced me it was gonna end anyway. I was thrown off many times. I thought the mystery was executed really well and I definitely think this would be such a fun read in October, getting close to Halloween times. It's just really good. All right y'all, well those are all of the books that I recommend picking up this fall. If you like spooky, scary, intense, mysterious, crazy reads, these ones are for you guys. You get me because I love these kinds of books and if you guys have any recommendations of scary, creepy, paranormal, horror, mystery thriller, action-packed, heart-pumping books, please put them below. I really would love to know. I need to put more on my TBR. I love these kinds of books and I'm always looking for more recommendations. All right y'all, that's all I got. I love you. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are and I'll talk to you soon in my next video. Bye! Did I'm